can have yours as well. Then I have yours as well. And then I can make this so I put my capacitor back in this battery casing. I'll have to um, cut that out. Two big ones will fit in there. The three big ones fit in there. One, two will fit in quite nicely. The third one, and just put the rest of them in here. There and in there, that's it. I'm also going to keep another battery casing which I got stuffed under here. I got a vintage, a really old, on there, a really old early 90th century battery. I'm thinking of getting a um, set of six Maxwell boost caps that stick inside that. Maxwell are those ultra capacitors, 3000 farads at 2.7 volts each. I'm thinking of stuffing six of them inside that and making that into an engine starting module. In other words, a battery eliminator for a car. Just for odd jobs to carry it around, unless if it goes flat, it's not going to do any damage. It's just got to keep um, being the uh, electrolytic base capacity. You've got to just um, charge them and discharge them, just use them every now and then, just to keep them formed. But other than that, it'd be quite useful, because I could just crank crank stuff and not worry about wrecking the battery, because all of this is just going to be a super cap bank that I could just keep charging and discharging by cranking stuff over. Especially for the bush bombers, it'd be handy. So anyway, well, the cheapest I could find was about 320 bucks, I think it's the cheapest I could find for a pack of six that worked out. So, it's probably not so bad, but I wish it was a bit cheaper than that. That's kind of at it, a little bit out of my price range at the moment, unfortunately, but hopefully it'll come down to being in price. But anyway, I'm going to um, give that cap back and that'll go blow this up. I haven't used that in a while, so hopefully I haven't um, deformed too badly, I hope. So I'll hook this up and we're going to start having some uh, popping fun. I'll probably should do it outside because that's going to make a mess. Okay, we also got the little capacitor bank ready to go. Got the rest of this squirrel back and clean the pipe on. Charging up, everything's right. charge up all the way yet though. I'm going to reposition this for another blasting part or path to the current there. The thing is, find the path to the, uh, the best path of the current to go. Alright, that's ready to go. Power on. Oh, boy. 
Right, BGA, kip. These bags are bigger on the small capacitors because it's only a small bank charging at mains voltage. The big PFC ones need a while to charge to get big bags. There you go, they don't call it fire wire for nothing. I'll plug safety first, short it out. Yeah, I don't have to reposition this board, I'm just destroying things here. Short it out, safety first, discharged. I have to reposition my board here. That's a little better. It's only an old table anyway, it's already half weather damaged so it can burn a bit more. It's just got um, flash marks on it that won't come off now. Check out the flash marks and leave behind. I can get to this safely. Alright. Plug in. Charge. still works, I don't believe it. The firewire works quite well despite being a fried motherboard. Flash the blinding I can tell. Flashing across. I see a main, a main grinding point set up firewire for. MOSFETs blowing their guts. Pop fets blinding me with these flashes, I tell you. Look at their sunglasses. I'll have to be a garden guy for doing this. It's got it itself. Guts out. Tough BGA chip, I tell you. Safety first, discharge, completely discharge, safety first. Oh, smell that! Ugh, I don't know about sunglasses doing this, I tell ya. Yeah, that little bank there, it's got more of a bank, it's so small. And I got done mains, and it's charging fuller at mains voltage, quicker. So, if the charge that wants to get that much of a bang in of them, will take a while for the ZBS. But that one's still better than this one in terms of volts. And, that, and that's how you flash the BIOS. See the firewire works so damn well, burn a hole in the motherboard. It's picking his guts out there. Yep, there's some serious overclocking here. <laughs> Black series capacitors like, wow, gigabyte board's got. <laughs>
That's how you overclock your um, MSI motherboard and flash the BIOS. Man, that firewire, I think it's yeah, under that USB port, there's a firewire there. That works very well. So, what right, good firewire, get one of these motherboards. Quite literally, firewire there. Or is that in the hang on? That's the USB port. Oh, firewire's there, okay. Yep, there you go. There's our trapped and bloody USB port of smithereens. Super speed USB 3 million. Okay. Firewire is there. That's surprising. The USB does better than Firewire. Huh. There you go. I wonder why Firewire is not used much these days. Blew that chip off. Blew the real tech up. These didn't want to go pop. Some Sanyo capacitors didn't go pop. Zoom out a bit. No, that's why I zoomed out. Blew some pins off there. Blew some holes and caps. Switch still works. Blew the quartz crystal up. Yeah, the bias is definitely flashed. There you are. Blew some chips a bits. Blew some MOSFETs. Ami BIOS, 9.99. So I went through there to the main grounding plane. You can see that's all metal there. That's all vaporized metal. You want a silver plate or coat something with a um, coating of metal on it, that's the best way to do it. Uh, I've seen a bloody component off there. What's that? Yep, the capacitors come off. Yep, there you go. P6 cent SLI platinum bank blew a trace there under the CPU. Yeah, the CPU processed too much stuff. There you go, That's, this has to be a world record here. Eh? World record overclocking. This is how it's done. So that chip copped all the blunt. Micro star model MS 7350. A serious overclocking motherboard. There you are. That's the BIOS all flashed up. Thanks for watching.